We've been doing a wonderful series called The Truth About. Did you enjoy last week on the anointing? Yes. Amen. And so today, we're going to be talking about the truth about intercessory prayer. Try saying that with me. Intercessory prayer. Now, there are many different kinds of prayer by definition. Intercessory prayer is a beautiful prayer because it really fills the scripture which says, no greater love than a man has than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Intercessory prayer is that kind of prayer where you set yourself aside and you go in and you begin to pray for others and other things and you begin to lay it out before God. Now the Bible says that God responds to invitation. God does not force himself on anyone. Satan does that. But God waits for our gentle invitation. And so I like to kind of get right to the, you know, right to the crux of things. And that is, God, give me the whole group. Just get it in me. <laughs> Can you say amen? But there's nothing greater than when you begin to lift up your loved ones. You might have a child. You might have a relative that is not truly born again. In this lesson, we're going to teach you how to intercede for people who are not born again. We're going to teach you how to intercede. Like, for example, maybe you're having trouble at work. Maybe you need work. We're going to teach you how to intercede where you can bring God in to help us. Folks, how many here know that we need help? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, seek and you shall what? Fine. Ask and it shall be? Amen. And knock and it shall be open, right? Well, here's what happened. We live in a planet where Satan is blinding people's minds. Why? Because they don't believe in God. But you and I have the glorious gospel in our heart. Our job is to share the good news of salvation to everyone that possibly can believe. Are you with me? So let's get into this. Today, we will show on one of the greatest expressions of love you and I can put to practice. And that is to intercede. Intercessory prayer is asking God to intervene on someone's life or project, such as being a missionary, starting a ministry, meeting needs of their job, so that their family and, their, uh, and all these things are, are done. People say, well, what do I do about my kids that seem a little wayward? The Bible says, as for you and your house, they will serve the Lord. But we need to be praying for our children. Can you say amen? amen. Remember, Satan wants to sift anybody that he can find open to him. But what we're doing is we're praying that people come and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and make him Lord and Savior of their life so that they are protected against the lies of the enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God you don't listen to the liar. Amen. He is, he's the father of lies. And the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or being right with him. And all these things that you have need of shall be added unto you. Good to see y'all. Love you dearly. Now Jesus is the perfect example. Jesus is a perfect example of, of an intercessor. He's our cornerstone. He's the one that stands in behalf of us. Can you say amen? So he's our model. Jesus is always our model. We can see Jesus in the garden. And it said to his disciples, he said, you watch with me in prayer. I'm going to go about a stone cast away and begin to pray. Right? So he began to pray and he did this three times because each time he was concerned about his disciples being alert and ready to catch the enemy. Yet when Jesus returned from his prayer, he found his disciples asleep. 
But then he turned right around and he prayed again. And as he came back, they were asleep again. He said, couldn't you watch with me one hour? Pray that you enter not into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so as we begin to find out that if Jesus is our model of intercessory prayer, then we can model our intercession after him. Can you say amen? So intercessory prayer, for those that just came in, is standing in behalf of another person. Maybe a lost child. Somebody who's not committed to the Lord yet. A grandchild. Maybe on your job. You're looking for a job. We're going to teach you in this lesson how to claim and intercede for jobs. How to intercede for lost loved ones. How to intercede for your nation, for your country. To intercede means that you're willing to stand in the gap for what people aren't doing. Now, you are a product of somebody's prayer. Somebody prayed for you. And if it's like me, Linda, you'll get it. They prayed for me hard, fast, and continuously. <laughs> and look what happened. So intercessory prayer is one of the greatest weapons of love that we can give in prayer. And if you need to know anything more about prayer, all the different kinds and styles of prayer while you pray, then we got some wonderful teachings. I've got like thousands of teachings on prayer and all these things that are just stacked up. In fact, I know Sherry knows we have stacks of outlines from all the years I've been preaching, we, I tried to save them so that you can build Bible studies and you can bring the word into your home and you can share right from, from your church or from your pastor the word of righteousness. Can you say amen? amen? All right. Often we may see something we don't like. What should we do, Pastor Kerry? When you begin to see things that you don't like, you don't tell someone other than Jesus. You see, when God opens your eyes to people and to things, when you pray and ask God to give you God's wisdom, you begin to see things that need to be fixed. That does not mean you run right out there and fix it. It means that you go to the Lord and say, God, this individual is struggling. And rather than me figuring out what's wrong, what they're doing, I'm praying that you go in and help straighten that out and love them back to you or love them to you. You see, God doesn't want to lead for us to lean to our own understanding, but he wants us to be able to pray. So if you see something, maybe on the job or with a brother or sister, instead of criticizing, instead of doing anything, go to prayer and say, God, give them what they need. Help them to overcome that area. And I bind the devil from hindering them from growing. And I remove his assignment. And I release the angels now to minister for them. Why? Because they're heirs of salvation. And so we're going to have a good time about intercession today. And so I want you to realize that this again is one of the greatest expressions of love that a Christian can do. Is to lay down their life and pray for others. Say amen, somebody. All right, go with me to 1 John, please. We're going to pick up of chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. 1 John, okay, that's way over by the book of Revelation. Verse 14, listen to this. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to the will or to his will, he hears us. What are we supposed to have when we pray? Confidence. Why? Because when we pray, we believe that he hears us. Correct? Now, I don't know about you. I've heard Christians say, oh, I sure hope the Lord heard my prayers. What are you saying? <laughs> There's blind, deaf, and dumb. <laughs> We're going to give you some great things. First of all, let me explain some things. Who did Adam and Eve leave when they sinned? 
They left God, didn't they? They moved out of the garden into complete chaos. And it wasn't until Genesis chapter 4 that men began to call on the name of the Lord again. God help us, God help us, God help us. Folks, Satan doesn't want you to ask God for help. He wants you to try to figure it out on your own. I don't know about you, but my brain can burn out trying to figure out things. I'd rather trust in God. Can you say amen? So a lifestyle of prayer is very important. We want to meet with God first thing in the morning. And also we want to learn how to intercede for our loved ones. Can you say amen? Because many Christians don't know that they have three sections. Say I'm a three part being. I'm a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in an earth suit. A body. So... When you read scripture, you got to know what scripture's appealing to your flesh, your body, which one's talking to your soul, your mind, and which one is dealing with your spirit. Can you say amen? But when you enter into intercessory prayer, God is a spirit, and you being in prayer will pray for others in the spirit. And God who hears from heaven will answer immediately your prayers. Why? Because his ears and eyes are over the righteous. Always desiring to answer your prayers. So guess what? God doesn't have a bad day. He's not going to say to you, Hey, I'm not going to answer your prayer today. You're being a bad boy. No, he's standing there waiting to answer our prayer. He's really excited about just getting involved. But we have not because we ask not. God is a gentleman, and he's waiting to be asked. Lord, I could really use some help nowadays. Lord, I really could use you to to, to speak to my wife, Lord, so I bind the devil's lies to her mind. I remove Satan's assignment to destroy her, and I release the angels to bring her back to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we're going to teach you what to do, why to do it, and the formulas used Hopefully I could get it all in today. But I want you to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. When I show you how to pray for a sinner, I want you to pray for sinners. Because you, when you pray for somebody, God answers. Now let me tell you a quick story. I used to belong to a, um, a physical um, gym way back before gyms were popular. It was called Bally's. You remember Pally's? Yeah. yeah. I was, I, somebody bought me a lifetime member when I was a little sawed off pastor. And I would go twice a week and work out a little bit. You know, I would never was one of those real workout people. But what I like to do is I like to swim. You know what happens to me when I swim now? Jarrell, I swim in circles. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so I'm sitting. Now listen to this. I got to show you how this works. I love to ask God about things. How many here like to ask God about things? Then you got to listen carefully when he tells you. So I'm sitting in the hot tub. Great spiritual place to be. And I'm sitting back and I'm watching. And people coming in. And you know, I'm a people watcher. I like to watch what people are doing. And especially when you're you're carrying your purse or handbook, you know. (laughs) Anyway, I like to keep an eye on people. I said, Lord... These people are coming and going like they have no soul. It looks like they, they really could use the Lord to be saved. I mean, some of them look really bad. It looked like they had a whole night of partying or something like that. And, I, and the Lord, I said, Lord, what do I do about something like that? And here's what God told me. He says, you can sit right in, your, in this tub. And you can claim the salvations of those you see. And you can pray and intercede accurately. So that they are marked for salvation. What do you mean? Everybody that's born in the earth. Now listen, maybe you didn't know this. Maybe you did. Has a right to be saved. Can you say amen? And when you're born into this world, you're assigned angels to watch over you till you get to the age of accountability. Such as grandchildren. Okay? That's why our prayers are very important. 
And then when we get to the age of accountability where we figure out right and wrong and we start doing wrong, we need to become born again. That's where that is. And so we turn our life back over to the Lord and God comes in our life. But the Bible says that the angels of God are ministering spirits. This is Hebrews 1.14. Sent forth to minister all to all who are heirs of salvation. That's you. How many here are heirs of salvation? Raise your hand. So you have angels ready to minister to you. Can you say amen? So here I am sitting in this hot tub, and God begins to show me what to do. He says, each individual claim them. You know, and, and you don't want to do it here because your, your head will tell you, well, you don't even know their name. <laughs> What's that have to do with anything? God does. You see? We're not limited with our understanding. So I said, okay, Lord, teach me. And he taught me. He says, you claim the salvation, then you remove the evil spirits that have been assigned on them from previous generations, like alcoholism running through the family, addiction running through the family. This is a familiar spirit that tries to harass the family. Hello? This isn't something in your blood that you just going to go do something wrong. No, this is corruption being passed on to you. So, I prayed, claimed their salvation, and I removed the satanic destruction assignment that on that person. Then I released their angels. Lord, you at least got two angels on every human being. And because uh, uh, of our lifestyle, we often make our angels unable to help us by speaking negative, gossiping, being angry, never talking to God. And so the angels can't help our flesh. They help the new creation. Hello, are you with me? So you claim their salvation. You remove the evil spirits and their assignments to destroy. You release their angels who got bound up sometime during their life so they're active again. And you say, Lord, bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ where they can hear the gospel and make a choice. And then you go, that person is dealt with. And then you just give it to God. And guess what? God will hound that person until they either make a choice for God or they reject God. Guess what? So you're, if you're like me and you're up in years and you can't get out, evangelize, and do all that kind of stuff, but you certainly can't sit on your couch and start thinking of people you know that are a little trouble or are people that need some help, and you start claiming their salvation. What a tool! The Bible says, ask and you shall. Well, Pastor Terry, don't they have their own choice? Yeah, but think about it. How well can a person make the right choice with Satan on their head all the time? So intercessors, we like to pray the power of darkness away. Can you say amen? Every day when you come to church, you should be praying that the power of God is resident in your church, that the enemy is not harassing your leadership, the enemy is, work, is not working in your family, and then you start thanking the Lord, and God begins to minister, and next thing you know, you invited God on behalf of somebody else or some project And now God is on the helm, seeing that it's carried out. And instead of come see, come saw, we never know what's going to be. How many know God promised you your entire family? So we need to learn to intercede. So intercession is one of the deepest, most powerful expressions of love and prayer that a Christian can do. We see Jesus in the garden. I already shared about that. Hello. And so we need to realize that what the scripture says and how to intercede. So let's go ahead. First John chapter 5, look at verse 14 again. Now this is a confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, We know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. 
See, when you pray, you've got to believe he hears you. I love what it says over Mark 11. When you pray, believe you receive. Have the faith of God. Can you say amen? All right. Then it goes on further to say, if anyone sees a brother, now listen, this is what intercession is. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, what is the sin that leads to death? Can anybody tell me? Never accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now there is a teaching out there, and I'll, I'll explain it, because I love to explain good teaching. The Bible says only the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost you won't be forgiven in this life, nor the life to come. Remember reading that? Well, what does that mean, Pastor Gary? Well, the Holy Spirit is the third person of our God. Amen? He's in the earth. His job is to reveal to us the will of God, show us Jesus Christ, and to help us stay with him in fellowship with God. The only thing that could get us away from that is us doing our own thing, not asking God to help us. Are you still with us? Are you got this? Now, I want you to check this out. But if anybody sees his brother sinning a sin, go tell his wife. Go gossip about it. No, the Bible says you can change that by simply follow along with me. Sin, sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask intercession and he will give him life for those committing sin that don't lead to death. So maybe you've got a Christian brother or sister. Maybe you've got a child that has loved the Lord earlier but somehow has listened to the wrong information. You don't panic. You say, God, let me remind you, you promised me my family. And Lord, let me remind you that you said, if I ask you, you're going to go and get involved. Did you know we learned last week about the anointing cloths? But did you know that you can pray and ask God into their life and they won't be able to find peace nor strength anywhere out there in the world except by being with you or being at home where they belong. See, prayer, if I, can, if I can explain this, and I love teaching on it because I love to pray, but I didn't used to love to pray. I had to develop to love to be in the presence of God because your flesh doesn't want to be hanging out with God. But I learned that through the ages that as you pray, God begins to answer prayer. And he takes care of all kinds of things. And you know, the enemy just sits there and he tells you, well, yeah, God answers the pastor's prayer. But you know, with you, it might not be his soul. I want to let you know that God is so willing to answer your prayer. It's not a willingness not to answer your prayer. It's because you don't pray. He has nothing to answer. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> you got to become a child of prayer. Because prayer invites God on your behalf and you become pals. Can I use that term? You become friends. And wherever you go, God is. And wherever God is, there you go. And you don't think about being a Christian. You just are a Christian. You don't think about praying. You just know immediately when you see something's not right, you start praying because God wants to answer your prayers. It's not so much an answered prayer as an offered prayer. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do about the situation? If you prayed about it, well, no, then shh, don't say anything. Let's pray out of it first. Can you say amen? I, <laughs> all right. Now, listen. So you see your brother sending his sin. You may ask God and God will give him life. Okay. There is a sin leading to death. You know what that sin is. Not being born again. I do not say that you should pray about that. What that means is don't pray curses on people. 
I pray that they go to hell. Can you imagine somebody praying like that? They do. They do. So it says, don't pray curses down on everybody. What did Jesus say? Bless those that persecute you. Love your enemies. Love those that despitefully use you. Why? Because God wants them saved. And love is expressed in intercessory prayer. Somebody treats you really rude at work and it hurts. You got a lunch break coming up. Sick the Holy Ghost on them. You have great weapons at your disposal, but we have to use them. You understand? Here's a couple of points I want to give you. God wants us to have confidence in him every day. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because when we ask anything, we must believe that he hears us. And that we have the petitions. Guys, how many's ever signed a petition right in the front of the store? What was the petition for? Maybe you didn't know, but you signed it so that that petition will get passed, right? Your prayers are petitions. Lord, I beseech thee concerning this loved one, Father. I don't know where they're at. I don't know what they're thinking, but it certainly doesn't pan out in what they're doing. So, Lord, I put them on your altar and I begin to pray for them. And so, Lord, I ask for the enemy. I bind up the enemy and then I release their angels. Now, one thing you're going to notice when you pray for that on people, you're going to see change. And it might not be the change you want to see right away. I noticed once I started interceding over people that were hard, what I call hard cases, real stubborn, that the enemy doesn't like that. So I'll pray and I'll release it. First thing I see them doing is getting angry and getting all frustrated. That's a good sign. Back up and say, hey, good to see you too. And don't let what people display be the end results. They could be displaying, I don't like you. I, they could be displaying, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It does not matter because you have prayer. Huh? You have prayer. Intercessory prayer is the most powerful section of how to pray. All right, so let's look at it. Second thing, we, as we grow, must be careful not to criticize our brothers and sisters. How many found out that doesn't go very far? Come on. You've never done that, I know. Amen. And then thirdly, the sin leading to death. Tell me what it is, you guys. See if you get this. Not ever accepting Jesus Christ. That's what it is. It's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Whose job is to give us Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit's job. And if we constantly blaspheme him... The word blasphemy means to push away. To push away the Holy Spirit giving us Jesus Christ. Then I guess we're committing the unpardonable sin. By never accepting Jesus. That's the sin leading to death. How many know that God can forgive anybody of anything. Except for God cannot make people accept his son. It has to be their choice. And if you and I can have anything to say about it, we can pray for those people so that they can begin to desire God again and stop listening to the, the dorky, you know, the dude, the split toe, the Klingon. <laughs> Satan. What he does, he's kind of like a bird. He flies over people's heads. And the one that's open, kind of not open to God, he kind of lays in... A nest in their air. Folks, you can't stop the enemy from flying over your head. But don't let him camp in your hair. I think that'd be funny enough just to imagine that. You know? Serious, don't dwell on the nags. If you haven't prayed about it, don't dwell on what's wrong. Begin to call on God. Remember that fellow named Abraham? 
Do you know the story about Abraham? Abraham was one of the first Moonies. Do you know what a Moonie is? How many remember the Moonies? Song Young Moon, the big movement, you know, false cult is what it is. Uh, Mooney, they were called Moonies. They used to have joy and goes, the old 7-Elevens they bought up. A, remember, hello? See, I do a lot of study on cults and all that kind of stuff too, just so I know what we're up against. But, but, but the funny thing about this entire thing is that people, God is so close to them. How far away was God from you before you got born again? He was stand, he's standing right here. He's in the atmosphere you and I breathe. The day of Pentecost came and the Spirit of God entered the earth like never before. It says the curtain was rent from top to bottom and the Spirit of God went out through all of the earth as the waters cover the sea, it says. Now the key is, it's not until you become born again that we can inhale and exhale God. Hello? But yet God was right there. Right, standing right there. Just patiently and you know, I think I need God. Help me, God. Boom! Just like that. You know what I did? I was playing in a rock and roll band over in Pendleton, Oregon. Terrible place. Not Pendleton, but, you know, playing for the rock and roll and the bars and everything like that. Well, they lost their band to the, the March of Dimes. So they came to the bar and said, would you guys play for us at the March of Dimes? And so my... The lead guitarist said, yes, we'll do it. And he went out and did it. Well, there were a bunch of Christians there. And they looked at me and saw my long hair and I smell like marijuana and all that kind of stuff. And they started praying for me. <laughs> I'm serious. I never had such a, a rumble tumble last part of the month. My, my guitar player, who was an ex-Jehovah Witness, and me, the drummer, were jumping up and down on my bed arguing about God, and neither one of us knew him. And I said, God, how did that happen? He says, because somebody prayed for you, son, and asked me to get involved in your life. Man, can I tell you a little more of the story? So we got ready to go home. And as we were getting ready to go home the night before, I go out of side of my room. We're on the top floor at the High Ho Hotel in Pendleton, Oregon. I don't even know if it's this anymore. Top floor. And I come out of my room and I look down the hall and there is a full-blown witch with everything on. And she's, squirt she's got a whole bunch of bed clothes on the door. She's squirting lighter fluid all over it. And I looked at that, and we just got through spending a night of screaming at each other about God. I come out of my room, and there's this weird lady. And I said, what are you doing? And she screamed like a banshee. She ran out the back door, down the fire escape. That wasn't the only thing that happened. Then we loaded up the car. We took off for home. Car broke down in the middle of a snowstorm on this side of the mountain's white pass. They, <laughs> I mean, Satan will always mess, but God will always bless. And the axle broke on the back of this Chevy station wagon. You know the little station wagons? Axle broke. And they, everybody's crying around, like, what are we going to do? And this is when I was with Rusty. Rusty and, you know. And... So I'm thinking, God, I want to get home. I'm tired of all this stuff. And if you're real, I want to get home. Do something. Guy pulls up in a car and says, what's your guys' wrong? This is 2.30 at night, snowing. He says, oh, my dad's got a junkyard. He might have just what you need. So everybody got in the car and left me there. They went, they got the exact thing they need. Now they had to pull out the press bearing and pull out the drive line. And put a new one in. In the middle of a snowstorm. And they couldn't get the bearing. The bearings pressed in. They couldn't get the bearing to come out. So I said, God, if you're real. This is all I said. Do something. I got to get home. 
The bearing came out in his hand. That was Rusty's hand. Everything got put together and back home I got. When I got back home, the next day I went to a Bible study and I gave my heart to the Lord. Now why does things like that happen? Because somebody intercedes in praying. You have to lay down your part of your life for that occasion to pray in behalf of another. You see where love is, is totally expressed there? Because in order to step out of yourself and to love another, you know it's got to be love. Are you with me? So, go with me to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. This is God's word through Peter to you. In verse 10, you got it? All right. For we who would love life. How many here love life? Come on, you, you were designed to really love life. We're not talking about simple life. Loving life, okay? You who would love life and see good days. How many could use to see a few more good days? Yay. Every day is a good day with God whether it's raining, snowing, or whatever. You tell them that when you get up. It's a great day, God, because you make it so. All right, now listen to this. And then it says, if anyone... All right, I've got to find my place again. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from speaking evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Don't lie to anybody. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue peace. How many here like peace better than turmoil? Then who's the prince of peace? There you go. All right. Meet with him. For the eyes of the Lord. This is for you. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Everyone raise up your hand. Say Jesus is in me. He makes me righteous. Not you make yourself righteous. So God's eyes on you because you have Jesus. You have faith in God. His eyes are on you. He's just waiting for you to pray. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are always open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So the next time you want to do battle, if somebody's doing evil, say, Lord, they're doing evil. I claim their salvation. Get them out of that cesspool and bring them out. Can you say amen? Sick them, Holy Ghost, we used to say. Sick them, Holy Ghost. I've had a lot of friends get born again, not by just watching me, but me sicking the Holy Ghost on them. Remember, the Holy Spirit's job is to bring people to Christ. If you release the Holy Spirit and bind up all of the confusion that's on them, they're going to get day in and day out ministry. Folks, people that you pray for, they're going to have godly dreams. Hello? They might call them a nightmare, but godly dreams that you better get saved and they'll wake up sweating and they'll go, oh my gosh, what's going on? Your prayers. You've laid down your life to pray on behalf of someone else. And we can change lives. Are you with me? But the faces of the Lord is against those that do evil. Here's a couple of points I want to give you. Let me ask you, do we love life? Do we want good days? God promises riches and honor, long life to those that walk with Christ. Proverbs. Two, the faster we learn how to speak and don't participate in speaking lies, the faster we cut the curse off of our life and the freedom we get out of our flesh. Amen. Thirdly, we are righteous because Jesus, the righteous one, lives in us only. Amen. And we choose to walk with him, which protects us. Now, there are a lot of Christians 
that love God. Now listen to me carefully. But they don't walk with Jesus. They visit with him once in a while. <laughs> don't shout me down because I'm preaching. You need to get up every day and walk with him. Because he'll show you things to come. And he'll open your eyes to things you've never seen. He'll give you a joy unspeakable and a full of glory. He'll give you love that passes your understanding. He's just waiting for us to become people asking for the souls of loved ones and others for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Say amen. Fourthly, remember we are a, we're in war against good and evil, right? We're on the side of good. We war against evil. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things I'm seeing in the news and stuff that I don't like. But instead of me just talking to you about them and hashing it all out and going over and over, I know the one who can change it. Let's invite him in. We have not because? Amen. Finally, fifthly, or the fifth point is intercessory prayer starts us off in a journey that will blow your mind. How so? You'll see answers to prayer left and right. And God will have to stop you to remind you, see? I'm answering your prayers. Now go with me to 1 Peter chapter 4, look at 7 through 10. Peter is one of those guys that says, Lord, I'll never deny you. <laughs> you ever follow Peter's life? I like that. Remember, he denied the Lord three times, right? Remember the book of Acts when God, Peter was up on the top of a rooftop and he fell asleep. And it says in his dream that the Lord lowered a sheet full of all kinds of unclean animals. Did you know how many times he lowered that sheet to Peter? Three times. Hey, Peter, remember this? Remember this? Remember this? See, I believe God always has a way to, to let you, all of us, know it's him. He has something personal that he lets you know it's him. And Peter was always let, when God talked to Peter, was always in threes. Huh? Didn't he say to Peter, love, do you love me, Peter? Remember, Jesus died, rose again, and they were all scattered. They were out fishing, right? Peter and his brothers. And the Lord, hey, children, do you have any food? And Peter goes, oh, my God, it's the Lord. He jumps into the water in his underwear. And then gets them all gathered. They get up on the shore. And Jesus already got fish and honeycomb there. He's cooking food for them. And he says to Peter, how many times did Peter deny him? He says to Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know I love you. He says, feed my sheep. Then Jesus looked at him again and says, Peter, do you really love me? Feed my sheep. Then the third time, remember Peter got upset. He says, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. But he uses a different word for love. He says, God says, Peter, do you love me unconditionally? And Peter answers and says, Lord, I like you a lot. That's what that second, that third word was. I like you. And then he says, feed my sheep. So God has a way of relating to us, but God wants us to build that relationship with him so we know that we know that we know and that we're confident that he hears us. Remember, he's your partner, God is. You're the one that needs the help. He's complete. So he says, come on, partner up with me and get me involved in your life on a daily basis. Someone say amen. amen. Then Peter, 1 Peter 4, 7 through 10 says, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in prayer. And above all things, have a fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sin. 
be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift from God, minister to one another as good stewards of the grace of God. Let me ask you, would you take the time during your prayer through the week to lift Linda and I up? I know some of you do. Why? Because don't you think that we get attacked? You know, if the enemy took us out, church wouldn't exist anymore. This one here. So you pray for those in authority. You pray for your leaders. You pray for your presidents. You pray for those in leadership, your job, your bosses. Can you say amen? So go with me to Matthew chapter 6, and let's look at the secret place real quickly. Everyone say secret place is where I pray. Okay. So it might be in the shower. It might be in your bedroom, sitting on your bed, you're just praying and you're talking to God. It could be in the car going to work. You've made that a sanctuary, a time of being in the presence of God where you can intercede and talk your heart with him. Can you say amen? Now, intercession is spending serious time with God on the behalf of someone else. Matthew 6, seven, uh, 6 and 7 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room or that special spot, and when you have shut the door, shut the world out, pray to your Father who sees in the secret place. And your Father who sees you in prayer, in the secret place, will reward you in front of everybody. I had a little intercessor that prayed for me. Her, her daughter was my bus driver when I was in high school. And she knew I needed prayer. <laughs> We'd be smoking joints in the, in the back of the bus and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I was the kind of person you would avoid. But anyway, my bus driver, this little intercessor's daughter, prayed for me every day. Asked for God to save me and deliver me. And then when I got saved and delivered, she became my organist in my church. And then a little intercessor said, God laid it on my heart to pray for you every day, Carrie. And she faithfully prayed for me every day. The secret to Smith Wigglesworth. How many's ever heard of him? Yeah. The secret to his power wasn't his personal life only. But somebody asked him, what's the secret to your power? Why do you move in such power? And so he took him by the hand and walked him out to the basement. That's back in the day when the basement was outside and the stairs to the outside to go into the red cellar kind of basement. And he opened the door, and there was about 30 people in there praying in tongues, praying in the spirit for the ministry. For any successful ministry, it has to be bathed in prayer. It has to be birthed in prayer. So you want to be praying so we continue to grow, and that your family continue to be blessed, and that you continue to be blessed. Say amen. amen. But we go into the secret place, and we meet with God, and our Father sees us in the secret place, and he has this favorable hand on us, saying, man, woman of prayer. Prayer is a serious time with God. It's a time we change in his presence. Folks, in Bible college, I was taught that by acting on the word, I grow. Do you know that's not true? Acting on the word just builds my muscles. Real growth comes in the presence of God. That time of you spending with God is where you grow. Because he's the son. Can you say amen? S-O-N. And his radiance is what causes the fruit of his presence in us to grow. It isn't circumstances of life. It isn't hard things. It isn't just practicing the word. It's your time with God. And if you don't spend that time with God, you'll never grow. You'll have a lot of knowledge, but it won't be heartfelt God power knowledge. You see, a lot of Christians are walking by what we call head knowledge, not heart knowledge. 15 inches, 
between success and failure. Are you with me? Almost done with you now. So listen to this. In Psalms 91, again, emphasizing that place where you pray to God. Psalm says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of his influence. And I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress. Hello? If you are walking around and you have a refuge and a fortress around you, what are you afraid of? But we don't think we have a, a angels, refuge, we have a, a building, we have a, we have a castle, an army. I mean, think about it. We have Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit. We have the angels, the word. We have the armor. We have the blood. We have the name. What does the devil have? The ability to deceive you from prayer. Because the way you really get to know God is not just through the word. It's that time with God. The reason why I go over here and, and point to that because it just emphasizes it, okay? All right. First Timothy chapter 2, please. 1 through 6. You don't like your governor? Pray for him. Don't criticize them. Because when we criticize others, even though you think they deserve it, you set yourself up for attack from the enemy. We pray for them. We ask God to save them. We remove the evil spirits that are lying to them. And here's why. First Timothy chapter 2, please. Read along with me if you have your Bible. Therefore, I, exhor I exhort first of all, that supplications, that's petitionings, prayers, intercession, and the giving of thanks be made for all men. How many men? You got somebody who's honoring in your life? There you go. All right. Why? Verse 2 says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and in reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God and our Savior, who desires that all men be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. So you need to know that if you see a situation you don't like, you can pray and change it. We have not because... Do you have a wayward child? Maybe a spouse? Maybe a, a boss that just loves to pick on you? Lift them up in prayer. For example, let me use me. All oh, that carry all of it. Boy, he's really tough on me. I lift him up in prayer, Lord. Forgive me if I said anything negative about him. And Lord, I claim his salvation. I bind up the enemy that causes him to do those things. I remove their assignment. Now I release in Jesus' name the angels to minister to him. And he will be a fine man. He will serve the Lord and he will like me in Jesus' name. He's in trouble. That's why you look for people that are out of line and you go, sick him, Holy Ghost. Hello? You got the upper hand, folks. God made you have the upper hand. Was it anything you did? But if we don't take the upper hand that God gives us and slap the devil around like he needs to be slapped around, who's going to then do it? I done preached my help and myself happy. All right, so prayer for everybody. Can you say Amen. Now you might say, well, Pastor Kerry, prayer, number one, prayer is love expressed by spending time with God on behalf of another. Two, God wants all men to be saved, right? So we can live a peaceable and a good life, right? We don't want to be oppressed by our president or by, by some situation, 
Have you got a lawyer looking, breathing down his nose? He's going to bring some suit. Pray for him. Send confusion into his camp. We have all kinds of wonderful assets in love that we can do so that we don't get harassed as much as we need not to be. Can you say amen? God wants everybody to be saved. Jesus is our power source whom we release. So here's, here's, here's another thing. How many has ever prayed for somebody and they actually got healed? Come on, let me see the hands. Why do you suppose that happened? And other times you prayed, nothing happened. Can I give you an answer? When you pray, pray out of your gut, not off your head. Let me give you an example. I can say Jesus. Say that with me right off the top of your head. Jesus. Now, out of your being, say Jesus. Can you sense a difference? One's from your spirit, the other was off the top of your head. Your head doesn't have any power, but your spirit has God in it. So when you're praying for somebody, pray from your spirit onto them. Because your spirit has God in it, and God has your spirit in it. And by when you're praying, you're releasing God. Not your wishful thinking. Oh, I pray and certainly hope that you receive when I pray for you. Don't pray. <laughs> you haven't got an ounce of faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? So we pray, we believe we receive it, and we shall have it. Take a deep breath, everybody. Do you realize how much power you have at your disposal? What are you going to do with it? Regarding people in authority, pray. Don't complain about them. Don't gossip. Christians today want to know why there isn't more power in their life. Well, if you speak things you shouldn't, it'll drain power. How many have a battery in your car? Have you ever shorted that battery out or left the lights on? What happened? It went dead. You speak contrary with your mouth, you start complaining with your mouth, and you will deaden the battery in you. Hello? You get more in sparks. <laughs> now, fifthly, claiming people's salvation is fun. <laughs> fun. I got a lady who walks by here almost every day when it's nice. And she's of Indian descent. And I just pray the Holy Ghost on her. God, show her that Jesus is the way. Hello. I wouldn't be concerned about it. I guarantee she's going to be on her way to salvation. Why? Because a child of God like yourself has asked for their soul. You can do a lot of great things, people. But sometimes we get involved in playing church. What does that mean? Well, we go and we love the Lord. Amen. Now, please, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But nobody's inspiring and teaching you what you have. Nobody's giving you all these little things so that you can become constructive in the kingdom. But oftentimes we're wondering, oh, okay, so raw, well, so raw. Whatever will be, will be. The enemies come and rip me off, can't you see? Okay, so rock. <laughs> Hello? <coughs> we have to be active. We have to be strong. Can you say amen? And we are that in Jesus. All right. Go with me to Philippians chapter 4. This is what will set you free. Say, I'm going to practice this. This is a good scripture for us. I had a brother one time. I said, brother, I love you dearly, but I noticed that you run out and you start doing anything, but you don't pray to God and ask him for wisdom before you go out and do something. How many know it's better to pray and ask for wisdom before you went and bought a car that has a cracked block? God's eyes are deeper than yours. He can see everything. Lean on him. Now, let me tell you how 
how wonderful it is to lean on God. Do you remember John the Beloved? Remember John the Beloved? The Apostle John. They couldn't kill him, could they? Do you know how he got like that? Because of all the disciples, he was the one that leaned on Jesus all the time. Peter would be upset at him. And John would open his mouth and say, Jesus loves me best. Now we know that's not right, but I believe by John's exposure to, G exposure to Jesus caused him to have a long life. That's my belief. He's the only one of the disciples that wasn't killed before his time. I mean, they put him in a vat of boiling oil. He just played in it, and they didn't know what to do. So they stuck him on an island that was just rock called Patmos. And he says, you're going to stay there till you die because we can't get rid of you any other way. <laughs> Truth. Fox's Book of Martyrs. So he's playing and having fun, so they move him to this island. Now, in this island, all these Roman soldiers are moved in for six months and moved out. So he get a fresh bunch of people to win to the Lord every six months. <laughs> and he just kept sharing and everything. And you read about John, he lived a full, long life. And I'll guarantee that he did that because he learned to lean on Jesus every day. Him and Jesus are inseparable. How are you? You can do that too. God's no respecter of persons. Well, I don't want to be... People would call me a religious fanatic or something. Listen, if you're ashamed of Jesus, that's not a good thing. Don't you be ashamed of the one who can keep your life and keep it better than you can. All right, let's go on. Now, Philippians 4. Last scripture. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord, what? Always. No complaints. Rejoice. Now, I've been in situations where I couldn't rejoice very well, so I just kept my mouth shut till I could. But complaining will not get you anywhere good. First Corinthians chapter 10 tells that when the Israelites complained, snakes came in and bit them. Aren't you glad you live in the New Testament? Actually, the interpretation of that in the New Testament is if you gossip and complain, Satan will come in and harass you. We don't want that. Can you say amen? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand, from my hand to yours. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Then the peace of God that passes your understanding will flood your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Here's what it really says. Before you go out there and do anything, pray first. Just pray first. God, I'm going to stay, you know, I'm looking for a new job. I'm going to need your hand here. Pray first. Lord, I got relatives coming from back east, and they're not happy campers. Pray first, you know? Come on. Bringing God in and lubricating your wheels. Bringing in the goodness of God when it was tight and dry. Are you with me? All things through prayer and supplication with thanks have make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God which surpasses all your understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Woo! You're not going to have stinking thinking. Finally, whenever you see it finally, it means this. Now for the rest of you that got this truth, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report. Is there any virtue in it? Is there anything praiseworthy about it? Then meditate on these things and which you have learned and receive, okay? Meditate on these things. 
So we're to be thinking about God. We're to be thinking about good. Can you say amen? All right. Now, how many here can change the world by yourself? We need God. How many here can change your family by yourself? As charming as you are. We need God. Amen. And see, here's the thing. You have God in your heart, right? But when you're stepping out and doing things, you ask God to come in the project. You ask God to come in the meeting. Come in the gathering. You're going to have a party? Come in the party. Oh, but we don't. And Junior goes out and gets in an accident. Somebody else goes out and does that. Blah, 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 blah. No, you're smart enough to know now that you can change your surroundings through time with God, through intercessory prayer. Are you willing to make that commitment to God and ask him to help you start if you haven't already? Amen? Well, then God bless you. There's somebody in here this morning.